Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and participants, I will uh, present now what uh, the European Agency role is in this um, landscape. And I'm starting by saying that a strong and innovative EU defense industry not only contributes to addressing current and future defense and security challenges, but also supports EU strategic autonomy and technological edge. There are significant developments in the defense industry domain at EU level, and uh, European Defense Agency role is more relevant than ever. Defense industry is, of course, a key partner as military capabilities could not be developed without industry. EDA has continued its structured dialogue with industry, supporting the development of a competitive and innovative European defense industrial and technological base by engaging with industry mainly on topics derived from the EU prioritization framework. So what is uh, EDA's role in this and how defense industry could be benefited from EDA's activities? I will start with the agency, which is a small but dynamic intergovernmental agency stated in the Lisbon Treaty and established by a decision of the EU Council. This year, we are celebrating our 20 years. In 2017, the defense ministers agreed on the role and the mission of the agency as the main instrument for intergovernmental capability planning and prioritization at EU level, as a prime forum and coordinator for capability development, and as member states' central interface and gateway towards EU institutions and stakeholders. Following the recent developments in the security environment, the revision and reinforcement of the agency role and mission is ongoing, and the new EDA long-term review is expected to be endorsed by the Defense Minister by June 2024. Following its mission, EDA supports member states throughout the entire life cycle of a capability. This support is taking in place through various work strands and working groups comprised of defense stakeholders, including member state experts, other EU and international stakeholders and organizations, industry, academia, and research and technology organization. From a global EU defense perspective, EDA has a unique and privileged position. It is the central hub and the place to go when it comes for European defense capabilities and cooperation. As it is difficult to address all enterprises and companies, the EDA's main interlocutors are the ASD, the Aerospace Security and Defense Association, and the National Defense Industry Associations. We always encourage our stakeholders to become members of their NDIAs since they can get much easily and quickly the necessary information and support provided also by the European Defense Agency. Let's move now to the how. We have a structured dialogue with industry and the approach of EDA's industry engagement is based on five pillars. Industry, academia and RTOs can be engaged in our main activities in capability development, in research technology and innovation, in key strategic activities and wider EU policies impacting defense interest as well as considering the overall support to industry. We think that industry should be more closely associated with EDA in the preparation, development, and implementation of capability and research and technology priorities, as industry is a valuable provider of relevant information. Involving industry in defense research and capability development activities managed by EDA is sensitive and uh, often classified. So there is the need to have clear principles, rules, and criteria for EDA's industry engagement. 
As a fundamental principle, EDA's industry engagement policy aims to strengthen the EDTIB and focuses on European entities. Starting with the first pillar of industry engagement, you see the capability development. The defense ministers recently, in November 2023, endorsed the new capability development priorities at EU level. Industry is involved in the development of the priority implementation roadmaps of these priorities, so how these priorities will be implemented. Let me do a short parenthesis here and briefly explain the EU defense landscape and how various elements are interconnected. On the bottom left, you see the prioritization tools developed and managed by EDA, the CDP, the KSAs, the Key Strategic Activities, and the overarching strategic research agenda. These priorities are implemented by collaborative projects initiated through mechanisms like the Permanent Structural Cooperation, EDA Framework, the ad hoc projects, and other multinational schemes. These projects are supported by the financial toolbox comprising commissions initiatives in the defense industry domain. For later project phases and procurement, the respective procurement toolbox come into play, as you can see in the slide. All this effort, the ultimate goal is to enhance the capabilities for the EU armed forces. On the bottom right, you see the card process, the coordinated annual review on defense, which reviews the defense landscape, identifies gaps and opportunities, and offers recommendations for collaborative opportunities to address these gaps. Moving now to the second pillar of research technology and innovation, EDA involves industry, academia, and uh, RTOs in the technology groups, the so-called CAPTEX. In the CAPTEX, the defense stakeholders develop the EU R&T priorities and their implementation plans. Industry is involved in these uh, 15 technology groups by contributing in the development of the priorities and the initiation of, of uh, R&D projects. And I would like to mention here the importance of uh, the space domain by telling you that uh, in the newly established CAPTEC space, there are hundreds of entities that are participating in this, in this uh, technology group. On the top of this, and as a concrete deliverable of the strategic compass, the hub for EU defense innovation that was mentioned in previous panels has been established in EDA. The HEDI, as it is called, operates in coordination with the Commission EU Defense Innovation Scheme, and it comprises of the concrete activities shown. EDA ha has also a role in EDF implementation by participating as an observer in the work program committee, by undertaking the indirect management of EDF project when it is called, and by further developing given technologies achieved in the context of EDF. Moving to the third pillar of EDA's industry engagement, the key strategic activities. Here, EDA assesses industrial and technological bases from the perspective of technologies, manufacturing capacities, competencies and skill to identify gaps and dependencies. The focus lies on areas aligned with established EU priorities. Industry again has a role here by contributing to the identification of the topics and their analysis. Within the fourth pillar, EDA ensures that military interests are considered in wider EU policies, such as single European skies, access to finance, REITs, the regulation for the evaluation of chemicals, circular economy and green defense, standardization, certification and test and evaluation, and the latest are discussed very often these days, standardization and uh, test and evaluation. 
Here I would like to reference the, the joint statement by the defense ministers that, um, of November 2023 calling for the strengthening of the EDTIB by facilitating its access to finance. And this uh, ministerial statement was prepared by, by the agency, by the European Defense Agency. And we noticed a week ago that uh, the European Investment Bank reviewed and updated the definition for dual use products and infrastructures and approved 4.5 billion for projects in this area. Industry is involved in these activities by exchanging information and by participating in respective EDA projects. All these activities are complemented by structured support to industry with the following focus. Information on opportunities, supporting to SMEs and cross-border business and partnerships, and facilitate access to EU funding instruments. You can see some examples here, like web-based tools, workshops, newsletter guidelines, matchmaking tools. And uh, if I move a little bit on uh, more in hands-on and make it more actionable, I will focus on uh, the ADA business-to-business -business platform, which is a concrete, simple and practical tool that can help enterprises to find the right partner with which to collaborate at EU level. The tool is designed to be complement to main networking activities, such as info days, workshops, and events. The platform can be used for any type of business, either for calls, EDF calls, to create consortium uh, where the partnership is mandatory, or for any projects you want to start or is in progress. The vetting process conducted by EDA ensures that the platform remains a place for trust and safe collaboration at EU level. On the top of that, EDA runs a powerful online tool for defense, the Identity Funding. This software efficiently facilitates the identification of potential EU funding from all available sources at EU level. By using this EDA's digital tool, defense stakeholders can self-match easily its own defense-related project activity with funding opportunities open to defense or and for dual use. Therefore, this unique EDA's brand, identity funding, saves time, effort, and human resources to deforest, if I can use this word, the range of nearly 30 funding opportunities now potentially accessible for defense at EU level. Last but not least, the EDA Industry Engagement Roadmap offers an overview of all EDA activities of interest to the industry including opportunities for potential engagement. You can see here the envisaged uh, event for 2024, and the rest is in our website. In this list, you can see highlighted the EDA plenary workshop with defense industry, which is planned for the 14th of June. Building on the outcomes of the previous workshop in, this in December 2023, and following the request from many participants, EDA is organizing this event for address to member states, NDIAs, and of course the ASD. The agenda includes topics such as unmanned aerial systems, standardization, defense test and evaluation, and green defense. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attendance, and uh, I hope that you... Thank you.